Tyler gets back to nature. Someone drops a catch. And DC cuts his finger. Hello, welcome back to Sandstead Cricket Club TV's Silly Point. Joined, of course, by Dan Allen. Hello, hello viewers. Hello T, how are you, mate? Very well, Dan. How are you? I'm very well, very well. What have we got this week? We're going to go straight into it, wasting no time at all, starting with Back to the Archive. <laughs> Now, Back to the Archive this week is a funny one because it contains not one, but two games for a very good reason. One of those reasons being the first 11 game was one to forget. And for that reason, I don't really want to talk much more about it. And it was all over by half past two, wasn't it, T? I said I don't want to talk about it, Dan. You can say whatever, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Well, viewers, it was. It was all over by half past two, an absolute thrashing. You may have seen it on the YouTube, but anyway, we... Uh, because we've got our second ground uh, just five minutes walk away from our main ground, it meant I could, uh, at 2.35, I could go off and uh, film our fourth 11 game, which is what we did. Cool. So um, I know you don't want to talk about the, uh, the first 11 game, T, but um, Chipsid and Coulsdon was the opposition. They'd just come down from Div 1 and we, we were, well, it was our second year in Div 2. So, um, you know, we knew it was going to be tough, real tough. Uh, and Sam went out there, first ball of the game. Um, what did he do? Well, he just hit it for six. Glorious shot, 18 off the first over. Um, I, I think I think Sam was, sorry to interrupt, Dan, I think Sam was uh, injured as well. He had a knee injury. So yeah, he did have a knee his injury. Mindset, his mindset was always going to be to go harder. Yeah, exactly right. And, uh, yeah, for one glorious moment, we thought we were going to, you know, get, get I was really excited watching it. Um, I guess I knew deep down inside that it wasn't going to last. And sure enough, it didn't. 18 off the first over and then um, 58 all out. It's a great moment when we have a, a very, very rapid collapse. Um, something like 49 for four to 49 for seven or something. And Roger Wallback has to run out of the nets to, to go and get his kit on because uh, he's, he's, he's got to get ready to go in. Uh, and we're undone by a chap who got seven for 15 with um, nothing more than a decent length and a bit of wobble. He bowled well too. Um, <clears throat> So uh, that, that meant I could then go over to the wreck. My old spin twin from the 80s and 90s, Chris Aislinn, was uh, uh, batting uh, when, when we got over there. And Chris, he's sort of six foot five and, uh, uh, you know, he can hit the ball a long way. Everything goes through square leg. And uh, he was batting. And um, Patrick, another stalwart of the club, was umpiring. And there's a great moment, which uh, we got here, where... Um, Bowler bowls the ball. It looks absolutely nailed on for LBW. Uh, and you can see Patrick's hand sort of come out of the holster, but he, he you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't give him. So uh, it, it, it was a small, nice moment. Small trigger, a little wobble, but it didn't quite fire, did it? Exactly, exactly. It was a good moment. And, and actually, uh, another reason I mentioned that is because um, it, it, it dawned on me that we don't really feature the, the so-called codgers enough. And uh, we do have a special segment coming up soon um, called Codger's Corner. So you'll hear from some of the guys that have been here at the club for sort of 30, 40, nearly 50 years, that's some of us. So, um... Um, and Dan, you mentioned uh, Aishelman hitting everything through square leg. Yes. Um, you might have noticed there was actually Don Knowles playing as well, who is uh, a stalwart of the hockey club at Sanders. Well, he's, yeah, he hockey club um, first 11 captain. He's not a cricketer, he's a yeah. hockey player. Good no, eye, but, but offered to uh, turn out this day. And probably coming from a, a hockey background, absolutely nailed one through the leg side. It looked um, just like Viv Richards in his in his heyday. Yeah, and then inevitably uh, he tried again, and it, it didn't go too well, did it? He got a horrible moon ball and just made himself <laughs> look a fool. It was it was brilliant. And then there's another nice little moment. Well, it wasn't nice for uh, for the batsman. Um, at our ground on the wreck our second ground we're actually doing a lot of work on it so it's going to be great uh, once we get back out there whenever that may be but it does have a bit of a reputation for providing some interesting deliveries um and uh, poor old poor old sonny gets a, a sort of you know <laughs> a ball which is an absolute nothing ball and it, it pitches and then just rolls along the ground to the stumps now he doesn't play the greatest of shots to it but um yeah it, it was a it was a real horrible grubber um, and I love the way he just sort of slaps his bat onto his, <laughs> onto his 
pad as if as, as if it's yeah. any yeah. No, that, that wasn't fun. Um, there was there was also another moment, Dan, where a chap he must have been a second slip dropped um, what's probably deemed to be quite a simple catch. Now, my old man always told me there's no such thing as a simple catch, but this has got to be as close to it. Mm. Um, ho- however, redeemed himself with a within a matter of balls and held onto one, which is uh, which is good for him. Exactly. And talking of catches, I think probably the best moment from a cricket sense of this match was when uh, Polfers was batting. He, he probably got 60-odd, scratched around, but, um, uh, you know, a few lusty blows, as usual, from, from Polfers. Um, and anyway, he hits one back, uh, short extra cover, uh, you know, sort of just sort of gets his hand up, knocks it up, and the bowler takes a glorious one-handed um, uh, a catch diving diving backwards so a really really good special moment to, to um, yeah, and, and you uh, you just so happen to be in the right angle to to get the whole Perfect. thing uh, yeah any other angle it, it, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have looked as good so yeah no really really pleased that's one of my sort of probably a top 10 all-time moment moving on mm. um to our, our next section which is the ask the player section and this week a selection of Sanderstead's finest were asked the question what is your favourite bat? And it was a GM Maxi. And it had more linseed oil on it than a timber yard. The best, my best bat, I'm going to have to give it to 15-year-old me. Look at that bat. So my favourite cricket bat was actually the Warsopper used in the Addiscombe game. Um, I actually stole it from my teacher. My favourite bat has got to be the Woodworm original that Freddie Fintoff used to use because that was such an alpha male of all the bat ranges. This baton I'm holding here is my favourite bat. I uh, purchased this bad boy last year and, uh, well, the stats don't lie, check them out for yourself. Um, I've actually nicknamed it, interestingly, um, Torten Brecker. Uh, which is German for pie smasher, named after Johnny Longcock. Um, and for any kookaburra reps out there, I've got the kookaburra nickel pro. I just don't have the gloves or the pads. I've got the bag as well, so give me a call. Call me. Cheers. The mongoose talk, which is like the medium bat between the, like, the long handles and the really, really short blade ones. Uh, I've actually based my current bat off it. It's the exact same dimensions and things. So, yeah, that's definitely my favourite. It was unreal. The best bat I've ever had would have to be the bat I've currently got. Uh, just name drop Black Knight bats. Um, it's just a... I've always used heavier bats growing up. And then this bat was just a, just perfectly weighted for me. First Black Knight bat. You oh. know, it's a quality piece of wood. You're holding it upside down. Yeah, but it doesn't matter with one of these. <laughs> um, as you can see, probably not great, but it's got loads of memories in it. My kookaburra kahuna um, that I used probably back in 2015. Um, great bat, lovely pickup, has a nice middle, perfect for a slogger like me. Cheers. Uh, right, Dan, moving on to the more mature player that have been or, or some still playing um, into our next section that you referenced already called Codger's Corner. Yeah, Codger's Corner. I mean, these guys are my mates. They're guys that I've played with um, for over 30 years. Some of them have been around the club for, for longer than that. And we play golf together and we have a laugh together and it's great. So I thought, well, we, I'd, I'd get some of these guys to, to tell us some of the, uh, the things that they've done, who they are, what they do, etc. So we've got a little series here and this is the first part. This week, we thought it'd be appropriate to ask them um, how they would sum up Sanders Tech Cricket Club, the club that I'm sure means a lot to, to every single one of our coaches. <laughs> Do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler, if you think we're on the It's an institution. It's been around since God was a boy, and um, it stands for everything good in society as far as I'm concerned. Friends for life, fun, and a lot of laughter. The banter. Sitting on the veranda after a game with a pint, looking across the old sawmill, watching the sun go down. My favourite thing at Sandersted would have to be, I think, when we're batting, just walking round the boundary, anti-clockwise of course, with my friends talking nonsense. Uh, the pavilion. So many memories and one or two pints. My favourite thing about Sandersted Creek Club is, I think, the diversity the acceptance of me for what I am, a shorter person, 
that gets support from all my buddies and nobody ever reminds me of my height. That's what I like, the acceptance. Uh, the ground is obviously special to me and my family, but it's, it's special anyway. You don't have to be a member of the Sherlock family to appreciate what an amazing venue it is, and an unusual venue, um, a bit of a hidden gem. And, um, and the camaraderie, I think, uh, particularly between the teams in a lot of clubs that have, have, say, four sides. The teams are very individualistic. They don't know each other. They don't mix. Um, and despite the big diversity in standard between the top of the club and the bottom now, um, that, that camaraderie uh, uh, between the sides uh, that exists off the pitch, I think, is very special. And I think it's quite unique as well. And long may that continue. Um, I remember a couple of years playing for the Fours and George Jackson just came over and um, their game had finished early and he came and umpired for us for the end of our game. And that's the sort of thing that, that you wouldn't see in many other clubs, I don't think. So that's very special. Yeah, that, that was great. Some, you know, some almost emotional moments there. And um, the, the Sherlock brothers, Tommy and Patrick, they are the, the sons of Harley Sherlock, who, who really is the, was. Um, he, he died sadly a few years ago. The, the godfather of, of Sanderstead and the guy who who made sure that the um, the ground is in trust and can only be used for cricket purposes. But one of the things that I do want to do is to create a film where we uh, we we really uh, talk about the history of Sanderstead. And so um, people like Tommy and Patrick and all those guys and others too will will uh, I'll interview them and we'll get some stills and we'll create a we'll create a you know, a sort of full-length history of, of the club for those who might be interested. Amazing. Sounds wonderful. Mm. Right, moving on to our man in the field. Now, Dan, they say you can't be two places at once. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, because this week's man in the field is me. Ah, brilliant. How clever. And you're doing something a little bit different this week, T, aren't you? Um, we, we won't say what it is. We'll just, no surprises. Uh, we'll just plough straight into it, shall we? Uh... <laughs> Hello and welcome to a, a super special edition of Tease Teas. But it is the first vegan Tease Teas. Now Dan Allen, you're all familiar with him, um, actually has a second daughter, uh, a, a sister to Jalen, of course, and an older sister to the more familiar uh, uh, Lucy Allen, Lallen as she is known. She has uh, recently started a vegan cooking Instagram and it is spectacular. It looks amazing. Dan's going to put some pictures in right now. Um, and I have been given some vegan treats to try and let you guys know how they taste. A bit of a change to, to the cricket, I know, but hey, we're allowed to branch out. The first thing I'm going to try is a vegan cookie. It's a ginger cookie with some chocolate in it. The crunch is there, but still with that soft, gooey texture. Very nice. I will definitely eat all of that. I have some millionaire shortbread, and I believe they've been made with peanut butter. It does actually taste amazing, and I'm a big fan of peanut butter. I could definitely, definitely eat more of that. Now, the third thing, it is a Tyler-sized crumpet. <laughs> it looks like a crumpet. The texture is the normal texture of a crumpet, and with some butter, I'm sure it would be absolutely delicious. You wouldn't be able to know it's vegan, which is important. And this just goes to show that even if something's vegan, it can still taste great. Cheers. Peace out. So, T, I'm glad you enjoyed uh, that. Now, Catherine, she's, she's, she's been at it again. She's just made this glorious plate of, uh, I don't know what you call them, they're sort of Biscoff peanut butter chocolate things, and they're absolutely magnificent. So uh, um, I'm going to have one of those very shortly. I have to say, Dan, I was genuinely really impressed. They were, they were really nice. Oh, it's magnificent stuff. Every, everything I ate, everything I ate. And exactly. seeing her... Seeing her Instagram feed, I know you put some pictures up, but it looked brilliant too. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, vegan is, you know, you sh shouldn't be frightened of it. And uh, gluten-free as well, a lot of it, isn't it? A, a lot of it's gluten-free, yes, yes. So, there you go. <laughs> we never seem to have a lot of news because of uh, COVID-19, but news on that, uh, rules have now come out, some new rules that you are allowed to uh, play sport with one other. 
which means that Sandstead Cricket Club has opened up their outdoor nets um, on a, a kind of a booking system where you and one other can book the use of the Sandstead nets. And this week, myself and Dan Carey booked on, we went up there, and I must say it was lovely to feel leather on wood. Excellent, excellent. You should have told me I'd have come up and filmed, although it's probably not allowed. I mean, you're, you're a third person, so maybe not, although you wouldn't technically be participating, so maybe, no, probably maybe, not. maybe, maybe we can allow it. Or I could just set the camera up and then sort of walk off somewhere and, and then, yeah, go and away. then you ring me up and I'll come back. Yeah, yeah we could do yeah. that, or I, I could just set a camera up myself. Are we drifting into City Point here? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. How else can you get a third person into a, a sort of socially distanced two-person thing? Nice. I've got an idea. Go on. You know how on like some cartoons when you have two children stood on each other's shoulders with a really long trench coat? Oh yeah. Like that. You could do that. I could sit on your shoulders or something and we could make, make one human. Yeah, it'd be a bloody weird one, wouldn't it? Well, it'd be better doing it that way around than the other way around. I think me with your <laughs> shoulders, I think I'd probably crush you, but uh, I could probably... Well, there's, a, there's only one way to find out, Dan. There is, yeah, yeah, so challenge. Yeah, when we can, yeah. When, when we can touch each other, we'll, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll have a crack at that. <laughs> I'm sure that's on your list of the first things you wanted to do when you're allowed to touch someone is sit on my shoulders. Yeah, well, it wasn't, but it is now. So uh, yeah, <laughs> roll, roll, on, roll on the, um, the end of the... Uh, the end of the lockdown. Moving on to one of our codgers, and I, I wouldn't call him a cult, but it's his son, Lance and Matt, playing garden cricket. So you can imagine, I had times when it was tough in business, and Matt say you sack somebody, get them out quick. I've done it a load of times. But... Oh, here we are at the Silly Pointers Dad v Lad Bowl Off. Mm -hmm. We're playing out for a draw, or do we need runs? Cameraman. He's nothing. I can bat him out of a chair. Let's go. <laughs> Wait on. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> Move. Oh. Oh my oh. goodness. Oh. Six, there we go. <laughs> More like a 12. Yeah, so it's, that. it's great, isn't it? It's good to see Lance, you know, showing his class. You can see why we call him the Cornish Coley. I mean, he's, <laughs> nearly, he's nearly 60, but you can see, even in back garden cricket, you can see that he, uh, he knows his way around a bat. Um, uh, yeah, now he was joyous to watch in his, in his, in his youth or his younger days. He still is, Dan. Love oh, he's, you're right, you're right. He, he still is. He still is. Yeah. yeah. Right, to finish off, Quickly turning into one of my favourite parts of the silly point is Let's Go with Greg. <laughs> Don't like cricket. So, um Comment of the week this week is from um, Alex Byrne or Byrne. Um, this is uh, this week uh, after watching the de development game against Dorking um, that was a year ago last weekend. His comment is this. First team is getting some batting and bowling practice by the look of it to me. Not what I'd call, call a development team. Um, and that's a it's an interesting comment and I you know I answered it and we had quite a dialogue and he eventually sort of understood uh, what was going on but it's prompted me I think next week T we should have a little section uh, maybe back to the to the uh, archive on development cricket and why it's been such a, a pivotal part of, of our success in the last few years um, and how it really is a force for good absolutely um, and I think that's a, a wonderful way to, to finish off Dan and to say goodbye um, so check in next week uh, for our discussions on dev cricket and everything else um, thanks again for watching if you've made it this far um, and as always we love to hear from you so comment or email ciao ciao peace out cheers
Oh yes, the Harry. That's <laughs> gone for four. Dell's going to be livid. Oh, look at Dell. Oh, a double teapot. A double teapot from Dell. That's magnificent. <laughs> yeah, good, good, uh, good answers there from the lads. Um, most of them beer related, um, but yeah, it, it, indeed, absolutely right. Um, and now we move on to. I've forgotten. <laughs> Dan, it's the man in the field. <laughs> Oh, a taste of peanut butter. Have a look. Dashing, mate. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in this since I woke up. I've very much slept in this, by the way. Cool. Cool. Um, <laughs> what have we got this week? Perfect. Uh, another exciting uh, podcast, I think, filled with some uh, becoming normality. Segments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, get on with it. Cut the waffle. Is that is that does that sentence even make sense? No, it doesn't. But it's going to be in the bloopers, so this is all good stuff. Good. <laughs> Carry good. on. A bit like we did with the, um, you know, the sort of stupid incident with the um, bloke dropping the catch, then being hit on the head. So <laughs> what's happened? This light's annoying. Right, moving on to our man in the field. Now, Hang on, Dan, stop. I've got my hat on. Oh, crap. This might not be better anyway. Go. I, I, I mean, I'm still, I still don't understand. Let's go with Greg. No, uh, I don't. It doesn't matter. That, 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 that's it's why it's good. at the end. <laughs> yeah. Now, is that it? That's, that's it, mate. We got there. It's goodbye now. Okay, cool. Let's do the goodbye and then we're done. Comment of the week. Now you might hear my email go off there and we didn't do comment of the week, so scrap that. Okay. You're gonna have a real edit job here. Shall right, right. right. I do comment of the week? I'll do comment of the week and you can do the end. Yeah. yeah, yeah, fine.